How y'all doing? Welcome to Sunday, out here in Boulder, Colorado, 28th and Pearl. Pretty cold today, supposed to snow tonight. Uh, about a foot of snow, uh, I think they said, six inches, eight inches a foot, something like that, I don't know. It uh, starts this evening, and it feels like it's already trying to snow, it's so cold. But uh, praise God, thank you for being here. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you that we can come together in your name. We're two or more gathered together in your name. You're here with us. So we welcome you, Jesus, by your spirit. We do welcome you, Holy Spirit, to uh, give us the power to preach, the power to minister, the power to be a witness for Christ, to be able to make a difference here in our city uh, for the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord, for your word that we can uh, preach and proclaim and publish your word here on the street, out in the public where the sinners are, where the people are. And uh, we thank you, Lord, that we're not in a building all protected in a secure private environment, but we're out here on the public, uh, telling the public what they need to hear, what they need to see. And we thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us this opportunity to do this out in the public, where the public needs to be saved, not the church people. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you've given me a heart of grace and I thank you, Lord, that even our street ministry will be touching churches all throughout Boulder and will be touching the, touching the people who are believers who don't go to a church. And, uh, we just, and we'll touch the people who don't even know you exist, Lord. We'll touch all kinds of people out here today. We do that every single day, Lord, that you allow us to come out. So we praise you, Lord Jesus. And we give you the honor and the glory and the power, Father, for yours is that kingdom. Holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Kind of dragging today. Uh, don't know why. This is day 57 of our of uh, long-term fast. I'm on. I'm on a 75-day fast. This is day 57. Day 57. More mockers. Most of the mockers are on Sunday, but uh, that's okay. That's okay. Anyways. Uh, I lost my thought there for a second. Um, so this is day 57. And this is the first day of 57 days, 56 days, that when I woke up this morning, I wanted a cup of coffee. I'm a, you know, I drink coffee all my life. I'm a truck driver. I drink a lot of coffee in the truck. And, uh, and I've not wanted or desired any coffee for 56 days. That's really, and even the first day I didn't, when I, my first morning I woke up for, or my day one of the fast, I had no desire for coffee. And, uh, I, and but today, uh, it was like constant. And it's even right now. I don't know why that is. It's really bizarre. Uh, very unusual. So I've been casting down, as far as I'm concerned, that's a vain imagination because it violates my fast. So I've been casting that down. Isn't that funny? How could coffee become a vain imagination? Well, in my situation, it, it, you could apply that to what's going on. So I, I've been doing that all morning, and uh, uh, I've been successful at doing that. <laughs> and I do it by faith, all right? But what I want to do the first part of our sermon here is, is uh, key in on the scripture short that I talked about just a few moments ago. That's Proverbs chapter 24, and that is verse 3 and 4. And I'll read it here in the King James. Through wisdom is a house builded. And by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Pleasant riches. Pleasant riches. I tell you, we live in a crazy world, I tell you. There's a lot of trouble going on around the world. But, uh, but let's go back into the verse. I'm kind of sidetracked a little bit, and I apologize for that. I've been going since five o'clock. I've been up since five o'clock this morning. <laughs> you know, you'd think I would be able to be all alert and ready to go and stuff. But uh, I'm one of those guys who, uh, one of those people who uh, is very slow in doing everything they do. I, some people they can get a job done, lickety split, boom, that's done. But for me, it seemed like it takes me three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten times longer. To get one simple job done and it's been like that since I was a little tiny a little boy probably actually two or three years old I remember my mom yelling at me because I was so slow in picking up my toys I would look at the toy and I would just start daydreaming with the toy and playing with the toy instead of putting the toy away 
you know and you know, it just and you know it just went on and on and on that way and that's how it's still today it's 70 years old uh just you know i just dawdle along i don't know what it is i mean i tried to hurry along and my trucking bosses would always kind of fr get frustrated sometimes until they know my, how i operate then you know that's what the job of a truck boss and a dispatcher is is to know you don't give a load to somebody who is slow going uh, you give a, if you want a fast delivery if you want a fast delivery you want to give it to some a driver that'll go drive day and night and never stop until he gets the load delivered uh, i mean pedal to the metal 24 hours a day that's the load you give it if you want it fast delivery and uh but i'm not that type of person occasionally i'll do those type of loads but that's not normal not normal so my normal operation is it just takes me forever to get jobs done and that weighs on me sometimes weighs on me gets me frustrated because i look at other people who can get the job done so quickly and so efficiently and i just feel so inadequate most of the time even preaching even right now today right this very moment I thought, man, I mean, who am I? I'm not, I shouldn't even be doing this, man. I mean, I'm not good enough to preach. I'm not good enough to, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have what it takes. And so all that kind of talk is from my flesh. But my spirit is well able to deliver a message from the Lord. My spirit is well able to get the job done. My spirit is very strong and mighty in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we have a choice to make. We can choose to follow our flesh, which it's going to the back of the dust. It's going to die. You can follow your flesh and it's going to die. It'll probably take you where it's going. Yeah. Or you can follow your spirit. And if you're born again, that spirit has the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ, the Holy Ghost in your spirit. And that produces life and life more abundantly. And so you'll go where your spirit goes because you are your spirit. <laughs> You're not a brain with a body. That's a, a satanic teaching across the world. That's your brain with the body. No, you're not. You're a spirit. You have a brain and you live in a body. The body and the brain are going to go back to the dust earth, but the, that's the brain, not the, the mind of your spirit. But uh, So I had to make a choice this morning because I really just wanted to sit down Oftentimes, that's how ministers and preachers end their ministry. I was going to use some secular occupations, but I don't need to do that. They get tired. And so when you get tired, you just slow down a little bit. It's not, it's, it's not the best advice to stop. Like in this verse here, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Because when you stop all together and you just sit down, it takes an enormous amount of strength and power to get you moving again. I'm not talking about a day or two off. That's, that's fine. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about months and months and months. You'll never get started again. I have had people out here on the street. I've had people in decades past who have worked with me in track ministry and preaching the gospel that are no longer anywhere that I'm aware of. I mean, they've disappeared. I'm, I'll still place tracks, but the people I used to hang out with, even in our church, when I used to do altar count, altar, altar counts, there's usually two or three of us that had that prophetic gift that the pastor would call us up and we would minister on the altar. But it seemed like after a couple of years, they disappeared. People get weary and get tired and they just don't back off for a day or two, which is fine. We all take time off. We all need to rest. But you don't rest for months and years. That's not resting. That's quitting. There's a difference between resting and quitting. Unless you've got a health issue. I mean, if, you know, I had to take off many months when I shattered my left leg, you know. But once I was able to come out here with my cane, I came out with my cane. You know, I couldn't do it with my crutches, so I had to wait till I had my cane. I was made sure I could walk several blocks with my cane. And then I got my banner, I came out with my cane. But while I was recuperating, while I was in rehab and rebuilding my leg and my muscles and all my bones healing back together, I could come out to preach. So that's different, right? So all this has to do with these verses here. 
in Proverbs 24, verse 3 and 4. I'll read it one more time. Through wisdom, get this, wisdom is a house built. Now, the house refers to us, too. We build who we are by wisdom. And that's through Jesus Christ. Jesus has made unto us wisdom. All right? Very important. And also, after you're done building this house, then the next house you want to build, and part of who you are is you want to build your, your business, your occupation, your trade. Paul was a tent maker. A couple of other guys he was with were tent makers. That's their occupation. They built their business, their livelihood, I guess you could say. I was a truck driver. I built my trucking career, and that's what provided ministry, opportunity, and time, money and time through, through, the, uh, uh, through trucking. And so that was by wisdom. Then after that, you want to uh, you build the, the next part of your house. The next part of your house is you get married and you have children. Yeah, that's, that's a house. That's called a house. A family is called a house. All right? And so there's stages. And then from that, you build, you know, if you're a believer, then you want to build your ministry. That becomes a house. And if your ministry is a church, that, that's your house. That, that church is built by wisdom. We're building a church here in Boulder, Gospel Evangelist Church. We're building it by wisdom, all right? So then the next part here uh, says here, through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. Understanding. Now, it's inter interesting to me when you see understanding because understanding and wisdom go together. And when two things come together, it is established. And that's what happens when understanding comes in with wisdom. The wisdom and the understanding go together and what you're building becomes established. When all you're trying to do is with wisdom, it'll never be established. It will not be established because you don't have that second witness. You need two testimonies to make things established. Wisdom is one testimony. Understanding is un testimony number two and it makes a whole, it makes a complete uh, testimony. Now, Jesus is the testimony. Does we, do we need another Jesus? No. Jesus said that he has the fullness of the Godhead bodily within him. The fullness of the Godhead. So there's already three witnesses. The Father, the Word, that's Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. So those three bear wit record and they witness to each other. That's the witness of God, the witness of Christ. So God is established because establishment is inside of God. He's never not been established. He always was, is, and always will be. He's the past, present, and future. He's everything. He'll never, it's, it's impossible for God to not be established. That's why you can trust God. That's why you can call out and reach out to God for salvation and your healing and trusting God that he will heal you, okay? So that's understanding, right? Let's read it again. Through wisdom is a house builded, by understanding is established, verse four, and by knowledge, knowledge, by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So if you try to get riches, pleasant riches by wisdom alone, you'll get the riches of this world and you'll end in defeat. If you try to get riches, pleasant riches, by only understanding, you'll also end in destruction. However, if you use godly wisdom, godly understanding, you need knowledge, the knowledge of God, to be able to, to do this, to fill, see, the chambers, chambers of your life, chambers, the rooms, the chambers in your life, uh, the, house, the rooms in your home, the rooms in your body, the rooms in your... So that also would include chambers be filled by having children. So your house is a husband and wife. Those chambers can be filled with children, with wisdom, understanding. And that's how, and that's how families are destroyed because they rip out the wisdom, they rip out the understanding, and they, they just try to use knowledge. And knowledge by itself will not help you. The knowledge of God will not save you. See that right there you can see because knowledge puffs you up. 
it makes you think that you know something that you really don't know. It, it becomes prideful. And we talked about that on Friday, uh, that when you become prideful, you push out and push out of your life humility. Humility. And only when you're humble can you be a servant of God. Prideful people cannot be servants of God. So when God wants you to be a servant, such as Moses, he has to break people down. That pride has to come out of them. That's why Moses was out in the back side of the wilderness for 40 years. Was it because God wasn't ready yet? No, God was ready. Moses wasn't ready. But God is long-suffering. He's willing to wait. God waited for Noah to build the ark. He was long-suffering. He waited and waited. God's waiting for John, me, Preacher John, to, to uh, get his act together and just keep moving along and keep building the Gospel of Andrew's church. So God is long-suffering. We know that in the scripture, all right? And so when you want to fill your house, you fill your life, fill your family, fill your ministry, fill your church with pleasant and precious riches, it says here, and you can fill it, fulfilled to full, to fullness, fullness. The fullness of God's riches can be in your home. Now, what are the riches, the pleasant riches? Well, we know that it's not a car, a plane, and a house, you know, a building. We know it's not this highway. We know it's not this city. We know that the precious and pleasant riches of God are spiritual. God is a spirit. And the things that we do in the spirit, we get, we get rewarded for because that work that we do in the spirit is tried by fire. And if we're doing it in the spirit and we're building that spirit, that becomes a work of gold, a work of silver, or a work of precious stones. And then we're rewarded in heaven for that spiritual work, right? And so the pleasant and precious riches, or the precious and pleasant riches, is in that order, precious and pleasant riches. One of them would be the blood of Christ. We're coming up on Easter next Sunday, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ who shed his blood, his precious blood, shed his precious blood. So that right there is a pleasant riches in the kingdom of God and for the believer. That blood sets us free from the law of sin and death when we believe it and we receive it. And so we can live in Proverbs 24, 3 and 4 every day of our life. And if you become a Christian, you begin living in wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And I can go on for probably another hour just on these two verses because I have lived for years and years and decades in these two verses. And I see throughout the scripture that God used wisdom understanding and knowledge to build everything that you see, to create every single thing that you see and every single thing you do not see. He used these three things, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we can use wisdom and understanding and knowledge in our own personal life, in our ministry, in our church, and in helping other people too to see the need to gain the wisdom of God and the understanding of God and the knowledge of God through Christ Jesus, our Savior, by the power of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. So that's a small, short teaching on Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4. Praise the Lord. Man, I tell you, it's pretty nippy. I got a lot more clothes in my pack there. I might have to put my knit hat on here pretty soon. All right. So uh, I'm looking here at the back of my, this is my Bible here, the back of it is my sheet here. I take a picture of this on Saturday and I post it onto my website, our missionary website. That's at uh, John, C-H-O-Q-U-E. You can see it on the YouTube channel, .org. And just click on letter and it'll pop, this will pop up. But you won't get the whole letter. All you'll see is this here. The whole letter is, uh, goes out in email format nowadays, email format. And uh, so I really highly encourage you to get our email, uh, our newsletter. Some people call it a newsletter, and I guess you can call it a newsletter, but because uh, it's news about what's going on and, and news about what's, what Bible verses we're going to use this week 
uh, news on uh, what cities I'll be in this week, uh, what corners I'll be at this week. So one of the great benefits of being on our Sunday prayer letter, you can go to, to uh, uh, yeah, you can go to, there's several websites. You can go to the, you can click on the link below or in the description box here, and you can scroll down a little bit, and you'll see a link that says that it's subscribed to our Sunday prayer letter. Or you can go to uh, johnshuck.com, C-O-M, C-H-O-Q-U-E, that's the channel name here. And uh, you can go to, to a one-page website, shows you who I am. <laughs> Noise really bothers me. That's why I hear earplugs, but I can't, if I put earplugs, I can't hear myself talk. But I need to use them when I'm outside here, but not when I'm doing the video. So I really highly encourage you, I did pick up one more. It's taken me probably six months to find one person to get on our Sunday prayer letter but somebody else will probably unsubscribe. That's crazy. I don't know why anybody would unsubscribe. I've had probably a dozen people unsubscribe from the newsletter. Why? I only send it out once a week. I don't ask for money. I don't beg for anything. I don't tell you about my problems. I just tell you the, the, what's going on in our ministry. And uh, you know, I pray. There's two prayers in there. And uh, it's, it's really pretty good, I think. I don't know. But... People are what they are, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it, just, it baffles me. Baffles me. But you just keep on trucking, man. You just don't look at people, what they do, what they say, all the noise out in the street. You just keep on, just keep on going down the road. Keep your eyes ahead of you, looking where you want to go. And where do you want to go as a believer is to heaven. So look up for your redemption draws nigh. Right? Keep your eyes looking up. For Jesus is coming. And he'll come the day you die. The day you leave here is the day Jesus will come get you, I guess. I know a lot of people don't believe that. They think you go to, in the pine box and you sit there for the next 500 years or 2,000 years. I guess that's where a lot of people, they think a lot of people are after the resurrection. <clears throat> they just don't see the whole scripture. When Jesus came uh, alive, there were over 500 is it, is this, am I telling this right? I might be off. Uh, five, about 500, over 500, whatever. I don't know, I'm not going to go there because I, I mess that up sometimes. So I make mistakes. All right, sorry. You know, that's why you should search the scriptures on your own. Just don't listen to me. I'm just like you. All I'm doing is bringing to your attention some things. There's a, something about over 500 people witnessed the resurrection of Christ. Now, I don't know if those are 500 people that God, that Jesus raised from the dead at that time because they all came together or uh, they were 500 people in the city now to me 500 would be kind of a small number when there were thousands and many many thousands probably over 10,000 people who witnessed the ministry of Christ easy 10,000 because he, he fed 5,000 that's just the husbands and then fed another 4,000 that's just the husbands that doesn't include women and children so that's 9,000 plus women and children so there could be 30, 40, 50, 100,000 people. So 500 seems kind of odd to me. So I don't know about that. That's all right. Do I need to know everything? No. <laughs> Except for one thing, I need to know Jesus Christ is my Savior. So this right here is a diagram. And this is how we structure our verses on fire. We're in the Sunday prayer letter called, uh, uh, this week here, it's called the third day. It comes out of Leviticus 717, the third day. And uh, this is a diagram here of how we're structuring the scriptures. There's 506 uh, verses that have the word fire inside that verse in the King James Bible. I don't know what it's like in other Bibles because I don't study other Bibles. Other Bibles are lying Bibles or counterfeit Bibles. And I'm really sorry that people just cannot get out of a corrupt Bible. I was listening to a preacher this morning. I listened to several preachers this morning. And... Uh, one of them is very, very popular, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers and millions of views, and he's in a very corrupt text, very corrupt Bible, very counterfeit, written by man, not by God, and he's teaching out of this Bible, and he's got hundreds and hundreds of comments, how good he is, somebody I've never seen before, brand new minister I saw, 
I'm always looking around, just seeing what people are doing. It's very, very rare today in this modern era, modern Christianity, this globalist Christianity that we seem to be in, that's moving towards the Antichrist, uh, that you see preachers that are in the King James Bible. Very rare. And uh, even people who don't really frequent our church very much, who just come occasionally, uh, they also uh, cannot see the need for a King James Bible. And that's really sad. Uh, really sad. Because I can prove in every single Bible that's outside the King James, I can show you the lies in the Bible. I can show you where the lies are, and I show them the lie, and they go, oh, that's no big deal. They just flip it off, like, oh, that lie's no big deal. I understand what it means. This is my Bible. Oh, well, I just keep on trucking, man. I praise God that God's got a hold of me, and I don't know what God's doing with these other people. I don't know. All right, so this uh, structure, every all these extras are the scripture of fire. We start at the ends on Sundays, and then we go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday and Saturday on the center. And this centerpiece right here is an ampersand, and it signifies or a symbol or a indicator of some, whatever you want to call this thing, uh, for, uh, a, 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 for the soldier of Christ. And the soldier of Christ stands in the midst of the fire of God. And he stays pure in that fire of God. And Satan won't get to him, sin won't get to him, and he'll have victory over his flesh. He'll have victory constantly, right? And then he stands on the Word of God. The soldier of Christ stands on the Word of God. That's what this is down here, the Word of God, right? And so we have seven parts, and here's the, the Word of God here. All right, that's how this goes. So the third day, so let's go to uh, Leviticus 7:17 7, and see what it says. Leviticus 7:17. 7, <clears throat> I got my gloves on because my hands are really cold. My ears are too. All right, so 7:17. Let's get going here. I'm gonna put all this stuff away. Seven. Uh, oh. Did I? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Wrong chapter. Verse 717. Chapter 7 in Leviticus 17. But the re and I'm just going to highlight one verse, okay? Understand, we're talking about a whole story here, and this whole story is not contained in one verse. So I'm not taking the verse out of context. I'm just using a highlighter marker on this one verse, so to speak, a highlighter. I, what I did is I just kind of mark it off with my ink pen. All right, and this verse here is in direct alignment with the other verse that's in the New Testament that we're going to talk on in just a moment. Because what we've been doing is starting at the very ends of the book from Genesis and Revelation and walking inward toward the center in a sequential numerical fashion. Exactly. We're not skipping around here. We're not skipping around here. We're, we're precisely going in. And I hope I didn't make a mistake, but I'm really, that's, the, that's why I pray for hours and hours and hours. How was I going to logistically keep track of all these verses and stay sequential, you know, one, after, one number after that, one, two, three, four, five. Instead of going one, three, two, six, ten, twelve, you know, back and forth like I normally do. And that's what this, God gave me this. So we've been pretty close, or actually right on that I know of. I hope I haven't made a mistake. I pray I haven't made a mistake. But uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, so far... And so what's interesting to me is as we've been going and doing this now for since January 1st, uh, the Lord's been confirming that, yes, I am on track. So for a moment there, as you heard, I wasn't sure if I made a mistake, but the Holy Ghost reminded me that there's still a confirmation between the two verses. And it appears that not every single one, but maybe I just couldn't understand every single one. But oftentimes, the two verses have similarities, similarities that put them together okay because a testimony has two witnesses and both witnesses have to say the same thing <laughs> otherwise it's not a step it's not the same witness it's a different witness they're from another case you want to bring the same witnesses to the case that saw what's happened they can testify of what I saw but if they didn't see it they're not a testimony they're a testimony to the courtroom that's down the hallway now, in the courthouse. All right. All right. So uh, verse 17 here says, uh, But the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice 
on the third day shall be burnt with fire, right? But the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. Man, I tell you, that can really preach, and I'm really excited about that. Let's go over here to Luke 22, 56, and see what it says. Luke 22, 22, 56. <clears throat> Kind of hard to turn the pages of my Bible with my gloves on. Church pastors don't have to worry about that. They're in a nice, warm, protected little nice room. Everybody looks nice. Everybody's smiling. Everybody's laughing. And that's all the church pastor knows. When it gets hot, they'll be nice and cool. Their camera won't go off like mine goes off because it overheated. And... Uh, his feet won't hurt, and people won't be yelling at him. And he preaches the same people every week, week after week after week after week after year after year, decade after decade, until they get tired and they leave. But out here, every single day, I preach to new people every single day. Yes, there are people that see me every day, I know that, but the vast majority, the bulk of people have never seen me before or maybe haven't seen me in six months or a year. Because I do circulate, I have a route, an itinerary that I follow, right? Because I'm in 28 locations just inside my city. I don't go to one place in my city. I go here on Sunday. This is where the Lord put me every single Sunday. But all every, every other day, I'm at a different location. That's why it takes me nine weeks to go through the entire city of Boulder, nine weeks, because I can only preach uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in Boulder. So three times nine is 27, plus this corner here is 28. The 28 location, it takes me nine weeks to circulate through all my corners in Boulder. And if I miss a corner, that means it's nine weeks before I get back to that one corner. Yeah. And then some of the cities that I'm in, I circulate every four weeks. Some cities I circulate every every uh, three months and uh, some cities I circulate every 12 months but they're on a schedule like I'm on schedule for Fort Collins here next month and that but it hasn't but it's been a year but it'll be the fifth time of my time going there just letting you know what's going on a little sidebar there <laughs> 2256 in Luke 2256 but a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. Am I seeing the right verse? Sorry. 2256, correct. But a certain maid beheld him, this is Peter, this is, the him is Peter, as he sat, by, as Peter sat by the fire. Peter sat by the fire. This is after the resurrection. No, no, no. This is after the uh, Jesus was captured, and brought before the high priest, and all that whole night long of, the, of his passion. But a certain maid beheld him and sat by the fire, as Peter, and earnestly looked upon him. I mean, studied him. He says, I know that guy. I've seen him before. Where have I seen him before? I know him. Earnestly looked. Now, Understand that Peter didn't know she was looking at him because Peter was in sin. He was in rebellion. Yeah. He lied to Jesus, and Jesus said, you're going to lie three times before the cocks crow, before the rooster crows. Right? Which you mean in the morning, right? Because Jesus is going to be going through this all night long. It was mayhem in the city of Jerusalem. It was horrible. So that's what happens. People are captured at night. And uh, yeah, anyway, that's another story. I don't want to go there. So a certain maid beheld him as they sat by the fire. It was cold. By the fire. It must have been cold. Why were they sitting by a fire? All right. If it was during the summertime, they wouldn't need a fire. So it must have been during a season that was kind of chilly. Or whatever. It doesn't matter. But a certain maid beheld him as they sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him as Peter. And she said, and, she, and said, This man 
Peter, this man, I don't know his name, but this man right here was also with him. That traitor, that false preacher, <laughs> that one who called himself the Messiah. He's a liar. Who was say, who who was in that maid? A devil. A devil. A devil. Because the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil wants to kill Peter also. Not just Jesus, but Peter also and everybody. Right? Everybody. So here, Peter, this, I think this is the second time that he, because he's going to deny Jesus again for the second time. And then we go back here to Leviticus 7.17, and you kind of look at here, and you look at it going, wow, this looks kind of interesting to me. And you find this out here. It says, but the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice. You think about Peter. And you think about Peter's flesh. Yeah. Because just many hours earlier in the evening, Jesus told Peter, about who he was. He called him a rock. And pointed, then Jesus pointed to himself and says, Upon this rock, this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. it wasn't pointing to Peter, because the church is not built upon Peter, built upon Christ. He is our foundation. And who is Christ? The Word of God is built on the Word of God. The Gospel of Angels Church is being built on the Word of God. When you build a church on the word that's a lie, that's not the truth, then your house is going to fall. It will fall. Churches fall throughout the world. Churches fall because they're built on corrupt seed. And if they haven't fallen yet, they will fall. They will fall because every house will be te tested and tried. Yeah, that's what tribulation is all about also amongst other things. It's the trying of our faith. It's the trying of our foundation. Yeah. A lot of people are going to quit and they're going to deny Christ during the tribulation. And they're going to die in denial. What's God going to do with that? I don't know. It's, I would never want to be there. So practice now. Practice now. That's why I love being on the street because I practice nearly every day because this could be my last day. Every day could be my last day. I don't have any security guards around me. I don't have any supernatural, I mean, I do have supernatural protection, but I don't have, uh, you know, guards around me other than, well, I do have angel guard, guards of angels that guarded me. So I got protection, but it's not what you think it is. <laughs> That's why I call our church, it's not what you think it is. People try to see a church with the eyes of their flesh and instead of the eyes of their spirit. You have to have faith, have faith in God. But, on the, so the, but the remainder of the flesh, this is Leviticus 7, 17, but the remainder of the flesh, the sacrifice of the sacrifice on the third day. Think about that. Peter denied Christ three times by his flesh. Interesting. It's just something to think about. Third day. That's why the title of our sermon today is the third day. The title of our weekly letter today, this week's title, The Third Day. And it will be burnt with fire. It is interesting that Peter was by the fire. By the fire. Isn't it interesting? It's interesting. Really interesting what God did with Peter, what Peter did. Because Peter was being tested by fire. The fire of God was being tested was testing Peter's faith. But at the same time, Satan was testing Peter for him to break, and that's why he used that maid. So Satan was at work, and God was at work, trying Peter at the same time. The wood, hay, and stubble in Peter's life was being burned, and the gold, silver, and precious stones in Peter's life was being tried. All his works were being tried right there on this night that his Messiah was being, and the, you know, the children of Israel's Messiah was being tried and convicted of a crime he never did. An innocent man. But when you have a corrupt judge, corrupt lawyers, corrupt priests, 
corrupt ministers, the corruption only produces corruption. The Bible says that corruption cannot produce incorruption, cannot produce the opposite. It produces after its own kind. Sin produces sin, but sin does not produce life. Sin produces death, because that's what sin is, death, death. So that's why you don't want to sin. I talked to a gentleman up in Longmont, several people on Longmont Friday. I talked to people who were without sin, who loved Christ, and they were fully alive in Christ, and clean, beautiful, holy. It was amazing, big tall guy. God bless you, Jim. And then talked to some other people. They were living in sin, but they confessed Christ as their savior, but they were living in sin. They felt dirty to me. Many people I talked to, they felt dirty. I can feel the dirtiness and the decay of sin in their life, but they don't want to get out of it. They love their sin. Now they've been crying out to God, oh, save me from my sin. But then they just turn around and go right back to their vomit. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. You just, Jesus is so clear when he told two different people, he says, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. And that same thing happens when you cast out a devil. If you don't put the word of God in you, if you don't put Christ in you, that devil will come back and it'll find it without Christ. It'll find it empty and clean and swept and garnished and he'll br bring seven more devils worse than he was, and the, uh, the end of that man is worse, worse, much worse. So when you receive Christ and you take a devil in your life, the devil and Christ cannot occupy. It's a whole situation going on there. And I'm talking about spirit versus flesh. I understand that sin is in our flesh and we war against that all the time. That's why we die daily. We die to our sin. We, can't, we just constantly cut that out of our life. It's a constant process. But that's what keeps us strong. Keeps us strong. But we live in grace and so God knows what's going on. We have the grace of Christ, but we live in Christ. So our spirit is in Christ and we are in Christ. It's kind of an interest. So when our life will be tested by fire. All right, so what is going to withstand the fire? Because they want the fire of God to come on you. Our flesh is of the camp of wood, hay, and stubble. There's no good left in the flesh. It is of the world, and it will be burned up. However, our spirit, when it has, the, when it has Christ in it, we're born again, we will have, that is gold. We're gold within us. And that gold, when tried by the fire of God, will shine and become brighter and reflect the glory, Shekinah glory of God. Our spirit reflects that glory. It's amazing. So that's why we're going to get a new body, a new body from God, the one that has no corruption within it, no corruption in it, fully holy and pure. Really interesting. So these two verses talk about uh, the third day. Three times you can testify of Christ three times. A lot of things in threes, you know. Watches are three hours long. When I first started preaching, I was on the three o'clock watch from three to six. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I hope you found something here in this verse here that I was talking on or something in Proverbs. Let's pray real quick. Lord, I thank you that people can hear the Word of God if they have ears to hear. Lord, they have, if they can see the Word of God when they have eyes to see. And Lord, they can understand the Word if they have a heart to understand. So that's what I pray, that you give them that eyes to see, ears to hear, heart to understand. What wisdom is and what understanding is, what knowledge is, and how they can bring those three elements, those three things into their life and become established and receive the pleasant and the precious and pleasant riches of Christ and the kingdom of heaven within us. We thank you, Lord, for our resurrection that we live in. We thank you that we have resurrection power because we're in Christ and Christ is within us and Christ is the resurrection. So Christ was, lives in us. We thank you, Lord, for that. We're not gonna just go to the grave and sit there forever. 
because, anyways, this whole story, Lord, but uh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, and we just dedicate this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, man. I love you very much. You take care, all right? God bless you. Bye-bye.